guys welcome back to my channel Simone here today we're going to be doing the fourth shelf for my um, big bookshelf tour this is four of five I will link you down below the playlist for the other shelves and also the overview that I did right at the start this I could say is the fourth shelf this is probably the shelf I know the least about in terms of the books on it um, because there are a lot of books here that I was given by my dad or that I've been gifted so I don't necessarily know what they're all about however before I start I wanted to talk to you about some bookish mail that I just received literally about two minutes before I started filming this video um, and I am absolutely buzzing about it if I'm honest with you. So I received my first ever thriller review copy of a book. So this is The Retreat by Sherry Smith and um, one of the um, agents I think for Titan Books uh, was t on Twitter and she was asking people if they wanted a copy of this book and I asked her not expecting her to say yes because you know I don't know I never expect that but she did and I got a review copy of this book. So this book comes out on the 13th of August 2019. I don't actually know when this video will be going up I can't remember the sort of scheduling I have for it but I'm hoping to read this one quite quickly. I do have lots of books that I'm reading at the moment so I'm not sure how that's going to go but my hope is that I'm going to read it at the beginning of August. So this is a psychological thriller that apparently is for fans of Ruth Ware's In a Dark Dark Wood and Gillian Flynn's Sharp Objects. Um, so yeah we shall see. I think it follows um, a lady who uh, called Katie Manning who was a child star until in her mid-teens she was, um, her face was scarred by her manager and it ended her career and then it's about kind of what happens next I think. I'm not really sure too much else about it. This um, I'm very excited about. I've never read a Sherry Smith book. I don't think I don't think this is a debut novel um, but I do believe it's her first thriller. I'm not sure if she's written other genres before um, but yeah I'm really looking forward to reading this one and obviously I will update you when I come to it. I just wanted to mention it in this video because as of yet this book does not have a place on my shelf and obviously when I read it um, it's not going to have a place on my shelf because I'll be it'll be in my hands so yeah I did want to include it in this video so that you've seen it as well and also because I just wanted to shout it out and say a massive thank you to Titan Books for sending this to me and I'm very very honoured about it why is it that when I start filming my dog desperately wants a cuddle from me and is now like curled up next to me so that I can't actually reach the books to show them to you oh dear I do apologise as well this is actually the darkest shelf that I have so I'm not sure how well you're able to see it but I'm trying to light it well but we'll see if that works or not. So the first book that is on this shelf is the um, really old copy that I have of Shadow the Sheepdog. This copy I think is from the 1950s and this is probably my favourite childhood book. Um, this is a book if you ask my parents what my favourite book was when I was a child they will automatically say this one. Um, I was in love with this. It basically follows a boy who um, lives on a farm and um, basically a litter of puppies is born and he wants to keep one of them and they his dad refuses and tries to give it away but Shadow just keeps coming back so yes it's a beautiful story I absolutely love it I'm kind of scared to reread it just in case I don't love it as much but I'm also keeping it on my shelf just in case I ever feel the need and I really want to reread it up next is Pod by Stephen Wallenfels. This is a sci-fi novel that I did read the first chapter of in a try chapter tag. I think it was last year so I will link that one down below for you if you want to go and check that out. This was actually a very close runner-up in that video because I loved the first chapter of this and I do really want to read this one and hopefully I will at some point rel relatively soon. Um, Pod is basically a book about extraterrestrials in massive pods in the sky and basically all the people on earth essentially are trapped inside with no telecommunications and they have no idea what's going on and yeah it's, it's a really interesting first like I said first chapter and I do really want to continue reading it because it did grab my attention so hopefully like I said this will be one that I read sooner rather than later. Next up we have Spider Bones by Kathy Reichs. This is a book in the Bones series. Now if you um, have seen the TV show, which is one of my favourite TV shows, um, Bones is a TV series about Temperance Brennan who is a um, anthropologist at the Jeffersonian and she essentially tries to find out how people died using their bones and she teams up with Agent Seely Booth who is an FBI agent and essentially they solve crimes together. I love the series, I think it's wonderful and this is, I'm not sure which one in the series this is, I'm not sure if this is number one, I don't know that one. Um, 
But on the front it says, the lab lady most likely to dethrone Patricia Cornwell's K. Scarpetta. Now, I don't think that's necessarily true. I don't like to compare, but I do think that it will be an interesting... I've never read one of um, the Bones books, but like I said, I really enjoy the TV show, so hopefully I will enjoy the books too. Next up, we have Hornet's Nest by Patricia Cornwell. As I said before, Patricia Cornwell is one of my favourite authors, um, and this is actually the first in a series of hers that I haven't yet read any of. This is the Andy Brazil series. Now, I believe this is, again, a murder series, similar to the case Scarpetta, but rather than it being from the medical examiner's point of view it's from Andy Brazil's point of view who is a reporter so this could be really fascinating I love the idea of this and I think it's just another dimension to Patricia Cornwell because like I said I really enjoyed her books I've read one of her true crime novels um, I've read some of her standalones so this is just another sort of string to her bow that I really wanted to get to next up we have a Danielle Steele book and again Danielle Steele is another one of the authors that I really enjoy my nan actually got me into Danielle Steele she basically has read every single one of her books this is Vanished by Danielle Steele. Um, I know that the light on this is kind of shining off it, but hopefully you can still see that. This one um, follows um, a husband and wife whose son is abducted. And I think it's about that. Basically, I'm pretty sure that the wife's ex-partner or first love or something is... Um, they, he's under suspicion for it, basically. I don't know anything else about it. I'm really excited about it, though, because... Um, like I said, Danielle still for me, she's so amazing because she always manages to go through um, and research her books really well and even though each book she writes is completely different, there's just a level of elegance in her writing. So yeah, another one that I'm looking forward to. Also, I believe this is actually like a courtroom drama, which we all know is one of my favourite things. <laughs> Then we have Predator by Patricia Cornwell. This is another Dr. K. Scarpetta novel. Again, I don't know the specifics of this because I don't like to know too much about the um, series when I haven't yet got to it. But yeah, this is another one, obviously, that I will read when I get to it. Then we have London Bridges by James Patterson. This is an Alex Cross novel. Um, you may or may not know if you've watched my other videos that I love um, James Patterson's Alex Cross series and I'm currently going through and reading them all. Um, I don't know which number this is in the series but I am really looking forward to keeping going with the series because I've liked all of the books in it so far. Then we have First Frost by James Henry. James Henry is the pen name of James Gerbert and Henry Sutton. Henry Sutton is an author and James Gerbert was actually the publisher of the or one of the publishers of the original um rd wingfield jack frost series this actually also has a note at the beginning from rd wingfield's son um talking about how excited he is about the fact that they're continuing on the jack frost series even though his father rd wingfield has passed away i am interested in this one like i said i've recently read the first book in the frost series by rd wingfield and i do own a couple of the others so i'm really looking forward to continuing on and then reading you know, the next kind of um, series uh, number, really. Um, I also love the fact that I didn't actually realise that this was by two different authors. Like, it's James Henry. They've, like, mixed the name, and I think that's really cool. So, yes, this is another one that I'm looking forward to reading. Then we have Golden Moments by Danielle Steele, another wonderful Danielle Steele book, I'm sure. This one um, I don't know too much about, so I'm just going to quickly read the synopsis that I have here. It says, Smart, beautiful, and very rich, Kezia St. Martin leads two lives, one as a glamorous socialite jetting between the poshest places in Europe and America, the other under a false name, as a journalist committed to justice and her profession. But the two worlds are pulling her apart, leaving her conflicted about her identity and the lies she tells to every man she meets. Then she meets Lucas Johns, a bold, dynamic crusader for social change and an ex-con. Their attraction is immediate, but their love may be just one step from tragedy at any time. So again, it's a Daniel Steele book, you know I'm going to enjoy it. It's definitely going to be wonderfully um, researched and done really well and another journalistic one, which I think is something that I am more enjoying as well, is reading books about journalists. So yeah, this is going to be a great one I'm sure. And I've had this on my shelf for ages, so I really do need to get to it. <laughs> Then we have A Killing Frost by R.D. Wingfield. This is a D.I. Jack Frost investigation series book. Um, another, like I said before, um, this is actually R.D. Wingfield's writing of it. What I love the most about Frost novels by R.D. Wingfield is how he manages to get like three or four cases all in one book and they kind of like intertwine and even though they're not necessarily related to each other, um, he just manages to do that really well. So it's one of my favourite things. So definitely a book that I'm looking forward to and again continuing the Frost series. Then we have Deception Point by Dan Brown. Dan 
Brown is the author of the um, Robert Langdon series, so the one involving the Da Vinci Code and loads of others. I've read a lot of those, but I haven't actually read um, his standalones. I think he's got two. I think I might have read one of them. Um, but Deception Point, I believe, follows um, a potential discovery in the ice that might change like the presidential election and NASA history. And then I think it's got something to do with... Um, the White House sends someone from the Oval Office to go and like investigate and then she finds out that actually there might be a bit of a deception going on however finding that out means that potentially her and the guy that she's gone with um, are now in danger and I think it's about that. I love Dan Brown's writing again he's such a thorough author and he really kind of goes into detail with his books and although sometimes it can make them a bit more difficult or like long longer to read I still really enjoy them so yeah this is definitely another one that I'm looking forward to. Next up we have Toys by James Patterson and Neil McMahon. This is a I guess a little bit fantastical book about a man named Hayes Barker and his wife Lizbeth who um, are have like superhuman strength and they have lots of other things I think like m kind of powers I guess and then one day they end up becoming fugitives somehow and they are and they are now sort of hiding from the law and it's kind of about that I don't know too much else about this I think this is a standalone and I do love a James Patterson standalone so one I'm definitely excited about next up we have The Damage Done by James Oswald and this is a book in the Inspector McLean series I don't know which number in the series this is but um, I've heard really good things about James Oswald's writing I've never read any book by him but I'm excited to hopefully get to it at some point this um, I think has got some to do with um, a case that goes wrong and it leads them to potentially get some information about a missing girl from years before and I think it's about Inspector McLean trying to figure out what happened back then because it's kind of stuck with him. Um, again I'm excited about this one, I'm excited about all of my books to be honest that's why I have them but yes definitely one on my sort of list to read. Then we have Black Notice by Patricia Cornwell. This one is another one in the K. Scarpetta series. Then we have Cat and Mouse by James Patterson. This is actually the next one I have to read in the Alex Cross series. I think this is book number four. Um, I You might have seen if you watched my Unhaul video, which I will link down below, that I actually bought another copy of this book um, thinking that I didn't own it and then found this one on my shelf and realised I did and I preferred this cover than the other one I have so I am keeping this one but like I said hopefully this is the next one I need to read. <laughs> Again another Kay Scarpetta series novel this one is From Potter's Field by Patricia Cornwell. Then we have Bag of Bones by Stephen King. This is a Stephen King book that I found in the charity shop and at the time of buying it I didn't actually know anything about it. Um, as far as I know this follows a man whose wife unexpectedly dies and he is an author and he gets writer's block so he goes to stay at this um, like little place in this tiny little um, sort of seaside town and when he gets there he finds that the mayor of the town has this kind of obsession with trying to get custody of his deceased son's child um, and so the young child is three and her mother kind of go to the main character to try and get help and I think it's kind of about that. I assume this one's quite creepy. Um, it kind of gives me the vibes of Duma Key by Stephen King which I read I want to say like two or three years ago and really enjoyed. In fact it was my first Stephen King book so we'll see how similar it is. I'm assuming it's not too similar otherwise he wouldn't have published two books the same but yeah definitely one I'm looking forward to getting to um, another Stephen King book to cross off my list. We then have The Sixth Target by James Patterson and Maxine Petro. Maxine Petro, as I've mentioned in other videos, is probably my favourite um, co-author with James Patterson. I tend to really like the books that she writes with him. Um, but this is the sixth book in the Women's Murder Club series. Again, I haven't actually started this series yet, but I'm kind of keeping my eye out for some of the books that I don't have. Um, I do obviously... I do own the first one so I do need to read that one um, as well obviously first but yeah looking forward to this um, series to start it and having number six is good because obviously when I get there I already own it. Next up we have Bitten by Kelly Armstrong this is a book that I've had on my shelf for a really long time my mum read and actually really liked it and she said to me she thought I would enjoy it um, this kind of gives me a little bit of Twilight vibes but kind of like a slightly older version so this follows Elena Michaels who is a werewolf and she's actually the only female werewolf in her pack and then she so she's actually left the pack she doesn't want anything to do with it but um, you can't really just leave the werewolf pack that's not how that works so she ends up 
kind of called back when something starts to go a bit wrong with the pack and she essentially then has to try and save it. Now I don't know how well I did in the Step Right Upathon, which is hosted by Nikki from I Read Past My Bedtime and Linda from Linda's World of Books. Love both those girls by the way, massive shout out to them. Um, but um, the Step Right Upathon took place at the beginning of July, so again I don't know when this video is going up. Um, but my plan at the moment of filming this would be to read Bitten for one of the challenges in that, I think it's the Warrior Challenge. Um, but yeah, we'll see if I did that or not because I'm not actually sure right now. <laughs> Next up we have Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. I've read a Neil Gaiman book before and really loved it and my mum is like obsessed with Terry Pratchett. She's read pretty much every one of his books. She owns all of them I think. Um, and I found this one in a charity shop and she said to me you need to read it especially because now I have read Neil Gaiman and loved him. I know that Charlie from Charlie Brooke has read this recently and I think she really enjoyed it um, and I know that there is also now a TV adaptation that I can potentially get to if I enjoy it. So yeah I don't actually know anything about it. All I know is that it's meant to be really good. And then the last three books on this shelf are quite big books um, but they are The Way of Shadows, Shadow's Edge and Beyond the Shadows all by Brent Weeks. This is the this is the Night Angel trilogy. I wanted to read a bit more high fantasy. I'm trying to sort of branch out and see if I enjoy it because I have read some Brandon Sanderson. I really enjoyed it. So we will soon see if I like this or not. Um, the first one, The Way of Shadows, says um, underneath the perfect killer has no friends, only targets. Shadow's Edge says the perfect killer has no identity but many faces and Beyond the Shadow says the perfect killer has no conscience, just objectives. So I'm looking forward to reading this, it sounds really interesting and I think it may be one that I enjoy. So there you have it guys, that is all of the books on the fourth shelf of my big bookshelf. Again, come back next week for the next one. Um, I do want to do my video shout out for this time and I'm going to be starting from today keeping a list of who I've shouted out because I don't want to keep shouting out the same people all the time. But today I have already mentioned this lovely lady in this video, but I would like to shout out Linda from the channel Linda's World of Books. Linda was in my June favourites as well, so I'll link that down below for you to go and check out. But Linda is a wonderful human, I love her so much. I'm so glad that she's become part of my life and part of my kind of booktube journey because she's so wonderful she does amazing videos her and Nikki did the wonderful step right up a thon which was really exciting and I hope that I can continue to support her as well and yeah go and check out her channel if you haven't already because some of her, her videos are some of my favorites so there you have it guys give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and let me know in the comments down below which one of these books that you would read first but until next time bye bye guys Thank mm -hmm. you.